Hello everyone. My name is Shraddha Tone. I am an assistant professor in computer engineering department from AISSMS IOIT. So in this presentation, in this lecture, we are going to cover the topic that classes of IP that is network addressing. So let's move towards the topic. Now we will see the classes of IP. Basically, communication at the network layer that will be the host to host communication means computer to computer communication. A computer somewhere in the world needs to communicate with another computer that is somewhere else in the world. So, for their communications, it requires the internet. The packet transmitted by sending computer may pass through several lands or vans before reaching the destination computers. So, for this level of communication or this type of communication, we need global addressing scheme. We call it as a logical addressing. So generally we use the term IP addresses to mean a logical addresses. So IP address means a logical address in the network layer of TCP IP protocol suits. The internet addresses are 32 bit in a length. It gives maximum 2 raised to power 32 addresses means what? More than 4 billion devices we can connect it to the internet. So these addresses are referred to as IPv4 addresses or simply IP addresses. So this IP address is a 32 bit address that are uniquely and universally defines the connection of devices to the internet. IPv4 address are unique because each address define one and only one connection to the internet. That means two devices on the internet can never have the same address at the same time. And these addresses are universal in the sense that addressing system must be accepted by any host that wants to be connected to the internet. Now let us discuss that what actually the addressing scheme or classes of IPv4. So generally IPv4 addressing scheme is partition into two types classful addressing and classless addressing. So first of all we will discuss about classful addressings. So IPv4 addressing at its inception use this concept of classless. That's why this architecture is called as classful addressing. In classful addressing the addresses space is divided into five classes that is nothing but A, B, C, D and E. So IP addresses from the first three classes A, B and C can be used for host address and the other two classes are used for other purpose. That means class D for multicast and class E for experimental purposes. The system of IP addresses was developed for the purpose of internet IP address assignments. So an IP addresses is a numerical representation that uniquely identifies a specific interface on the network. These address are binary numbers but are typically expressed in decimal form also or hexadecimal form also. So to make reading and using them easier for the humans. So the basic we can call it as the basic notation for IPv4 addressing will be in binary notation or dotted decimal notation. So we can find the class of an address when given the address in a binary notation or dotted decimal notation. If the address is given in binary notation as we can see this in figure number 1 this first A figure shows the binary notations. So here if address is given in binary notation then first few bytes can immediately tell us the class of address and this in figure number B it shows the dotted decimal notation. If the address is given in this form, the first byte defines the classes, which is shown here by some shaded region. So these are the two methods by using we can represent the IP addresses. Now what is in by NET ID and host ID that we will see. An IP address in a class A, B or C that is divided into NET ID and host ID. So the part of 
parts are varying in a length and depending on the classes of the address. So this figure one shows some net ID and host ID bytes. The net ID is in color. So here the shaded portion is shown here in this figure. This is called as the net ID and the rest of the portion which is in a shows in a white color. This is called as the host ID. So this concept does not apply to classes D and E. So we can see that in class A, one byte defines the net ID and rest three bytes define the host ID. Same for class B, two bytes define the net ID and two bytes define for the host ID. The same concept is for class C, three bytes define the net ID and one byte define the host ID. Next concept is the mask. What is mean by mask? Although the length of the net ID and host ID is predetermined, we can also use a mask or which called it as a default mask. This mask means it is a 32 bit number which made up of contiguous 1 followed by contiguous zeros. So the mask for class A, B and C it is shown in this figure and this concept mainly does not apply to class D and E. Here in figure shows class A which here 8 ones are there followed by zeros. So if 1 8s are there means 1 byte is there which consists of 8 ones. So it is called as class A. In class B 16 ones are there. In class C 24 ones are there. So this representation shows here in a CIDR form slash 8 slash 16 or slash 24. So the mask can help us to find the net ID and host ID. For example, the mask for A class A address has 8 ones. 8 ones means this is a net ID and rest of the zeros means the host ID. Which means that first 8 bits of any address in a class A defines the net ID and the next 24 bits define the host ID. Next concept is CIDR. CIDR means classless interdomain routing. So what is actually meaning of classless interdomain routing? The last column of that table, this was the last column. This last column shows the CIDR. So generally this shows in the form of slash n where n can be the 8, 16 or 24. And this notation is called as slash notation or classless interdomain routing. Basically this notation is used in the classless addressing but we can also use or we can also apply this notation to classful addressing. Next is subnetting. What is mean by subnetting? During the era of classful addressing, subnetting was introduced. If an organization was granted large blocks in class A or B, it could divide the addresses into several contiguous groups and assign each groups to smaller network which we call it as a subnet or in rare, rare cases they share the part of the addresses with neighbors. So subnetting increases the number of ones in the mask and the next concept is supernetting. The time came when the most of the class A and class B addresses were depleted. So there was a still a huge demand for mid-size block. And the size of the class C blocks with a maximum number of 256 addresses did not satisfy the needs of most organization. Even a mid-size organization needed more addresses. So one solution was supernetting. In supernetting, an organization can combine several class C blocks to create a larger range of addresses. In other words, several networks are combined to create a super network or supernet. For example, an organization can apply for a set of class C block instead of just one. We can take any example of the organization which needs thousand addresses that can be granted for continuous class C blocks. The organization can then use this address to create one super network. 
So supernatting decreases the number of ones in the mask. Thank you. In next lecture, we will discuss about the classless addressing mode.